Hello, this is Eamon Al-Ghazali from the SQLPro.com. Uh, welcome back to another SQL Snack. And today we're going to continue where we left off with our previous video about table partitioning. So I kind of titled this one Partitioning 102. Uh, so we're going to take um, a bit of a step up and get a little bit more complex with our partition. So as I mentioned in the first video, and I encourage you to watch it, um, partitioning usually a lot of people will do it on date fields. But there's also another purpose for partitioning. So what I have here is a staging table in my database. And then I have it, well, I call it data table. All tables have data, right? But this is my production data. So a lot of times what we want to do in a data warehousing environment is we want to take this staging table here and fill it with some data and then um, you know manipulate it, transform it, or whatever. And then we want to insert it into this table without you know causing any blocking or taking in a lock so what's great about partitioning is you can use a switch partition function and what that'll do is it'll switch your data from one table to another table and it's very very quick so um, it works the same way you'd have two file groups one with a file and a data file in each one and um, similarly to to the way that we set up partitioning in the first video, what you would do is, you know, you'd set up your partition function and your partition scheme, and then, you know, when you come to load data, you would put it in your stage table first, and then you would manipulate it, and then afterwards you would switch it into your data table. And uh, what's great about this is, if you have column store indexes, what you would do is, you would create it you would first fill your data in the stage table and manipulate it as you need and then you would create your column store index on your stage table and then you would keep the column store index on your data table and with partition switching you don't have to do anything to that column store index you can just directly switch the data into that data table so one of the things with column store indexes before SQL 2014, so well, not before. SQL 2012 was the first edition or version of SQL Server to have uh, column store indexes, and they were not writable. So with table partitioning, you can actually switch the data into your production table without having to drop the column store index. However, SQL 2014, which was just released a couple of days ago, you can actually have updatable column store indexes, which is great. Alright, so let's get back to the um, code here. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off of the last video. So, hopefully if you watched it, we're going to build on that. And I'm going to do a couple things. First, I'm going to alter my partition function to add another um, part to the range, which is 2015 data. And I've done this using a split command. So if you're familiar with the previous video, one second here. Sorry about that, I had to reload some data. So if you're per familiar with the previous video, when I built my um, partition function, I only had 2013 and 2014. So now, um, basically, with the split range, what I'm doing is I'm just adding um, you know, another range here at the end of that function. Uh, where'd my go? Okay, here we go. So as I run this, you can see that um, my, my orders before 2013 are in partition 1, these are in partition 2, partition 3, and now my 2015 orders are in partition 4. So that's uh, pretty neat. And what I can do is I can also merge partitions. So I can merge the 2013 range. Let's say, you know, now we're in 2014. So we want to merge um, this data with this one right here, right? So when I run that, we'll now see that 2013 is now in partition number one with 2012. So we've kind of quote unquote uh, archived it or removed uh, this part of the function. And let me just run this uh, query right here, uh, which is provided generously by Jason Strait. 
please visit his blog. He's a really smart guy. So uh, this code basically brings the file group name, tells you how many rows are in there uh, in each file group and which partition they're in. So as you can see, FG Archive now has six rows because it has my 2012 data and my 2013 data. And FG 2015 now has three rows because I did a split range and I put the 2015 data in there. So let's say that you know we now no longer need um, that file group FG 2013 because there's no data in there. So what I can do is I can remove the file group from that data file, from the database, excuse me, not the data file, and then I'm going to remove, uh, sorry, I removed the file first, and now I'm going to remove the file group. So the file and the file group no longer exist in my partition test database. See, they are gone. So I've essentially taken my 2013 data and thrown it into my FG archive um, data file. And now I'm going to go back to kind of that, that slide or that paint presentation that I did and I'm going to create a new table to show you how you can archive data using partitioning. So I'm going to create an orders archive. Um, it's the same structure as the orders table except the order ID is not an, it's not an int. Uh, it's not an identity, sorry, it's an int. Um, got that error because I'm on master. So I need to uh, quickly type here, use partition test. And now I'm going to create orders archive on my file group called FG archive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch um, with an alter command. I'm going to take the orders table and I'm going to switch partition one into orders into orders archive. Let me just rerun this query here so you can kind of understand. Uh, you know, partition one has six rows in it, and now you, now you can see the um, the other partition here from orders archive. Uh, don't pay attention to that. So, partition one has those six rows that are before uh, 2014. Now, so I'm going to switch. My uh, let me run this query real quick here just to show you. All of my data is in the orders table. Nothing's in order archive. So when I do a switch partition, I'm going to switch partition one into or orders archive. So what happens is now my orders archive table has my orders before 2013. Everything that was on partition one, and the rest of the partitions are now um, only in the orders table. So this is we can use this for archival purposes and what we can do now is we can just do a truncate on the orders archive table for example if we no longer need those um, you know that data uh, which is kind of cool because I'm not you know doing any uh, blocking here I mean imagine if I tried to delete um, based on order date that's going to be a log of the operation it's going to take a long time so now that I've switched the data into this partition which is extremely fast, by the way. I advise you to try it on, on larger tables. I mean, I don't have, I have 12 rows here. That's not much, but it's a very fast operation because it's DDL based. So I can take that orders archive, put it somewhere else, uh, delete it, do whatever I want. And as I mentioned uh, in the very beginning, you can do the opposite. Let's say that this was our, you know, we had a stage table. You could switch the data from the stage table into your your main production table using the switch partition which is great because it's very fast and when you're done um, you have an empty stage table so you don't have to worry about cleansing stuff out. Uh, this is very popular in a data warehousing environment to use the switch partitions between stage and production data um, tables. So I hope you enjoyed this um, Siegel snack and I hope to see you in a future one. Thank you. Have a great day. Or night.